September 18th, 2024. We're back at this porch attrition collection today. Still very active nest. So we're gonna knock down the population for a couple hours here today and then go freeze them up and move on to the next job. So if you've been watching this brief series about this attrition collection, then you'll know the attrition collection process is when you cannot pull the nest itself out of the structure. There's simply no way to get into the structure to reach the brood comb. So we just collect the flying wasps for venom immunotherapy from the outside of the structure. And that's the process you're seeing in this series. Still have a good swarm going because we changed up the visual orientation of their entry point. And whenever we do that by setting up gear to collect them, they get confused and they have to do a lot more orientation flights to figure out how to get back home. And that's why you see what appears to be a crazy swarm. What it actually is, is each individual forager wasp trying to orient itself to get back home and perceive what is a threat, what isn't a threat, can you get back in the nest? They have an intense drive to get back into the nest. They can't help it. And they will fly around that point all day until they figure out how to get back in the nest. And in that process, they get collected. So as we slow down the footage here for you, you can see that here on the third day of attrition collection, we're coming back every day or two on this nest and the population is just huge. Every time we come here, we're probably pulling another thousand plus out of the nest. And these are just the foragers that are out flying. Uh, there's another several thousand in the nest all the time, pupating out or as larva or as workers on the nest. Of course, the queen is in there continually laying eggs Eventually, we collect so many foragers on this type of attrition collection that we starve out the nest. And that's the point in the long run, is to starve out the nest because you are denying the nest any food. All of the food deliveries are being interrupted as we collect all the foragers. And you'll notice more and more of the duct tape closing up a lot of the holes along the side of the porch so that we didn't have competing entries and exits happening. This just makes it a little more efficient when you're only using one vac. You wanna to try to make them focus in on one entry point and one exit. And that worked pretty well here on this third day of collection. So over the next few minutes here, we're just gonna let you watch this collection happen in mostly slow motion. This is just a little montage of wasps trying to orient, trying to find their way back in safely and then getting collected by the device. And this is just how the job goes. You see wasp after wasp being collected. It's a little easier to see it in slow motion than it is in regular speed because it's so fast. The wasps fly incredibly quickly. The suction device works incredibly quickly. So when you slow everything down, it's a little easier to actually watch the process. So we're not going to narrate the process here over the next few minutes, but at the end of the episode, There'll be a little bit more narration, a little bit more footage in regular speed, and some more audio from the field on the day it was shot. If you want to skip past the slow motion section of the video, just go ahead on the timeline to about the 8 minute 5 second mark and it picks back up at regular speed.
So here we're going to take you back to regular speed and what a difference between slow motion and actual speed. They're so fast and so chaotic looking when you see them in regular speed. But when you slow it down, you really see the graceful flight that they do and the careful assessment they do of their space as they're flying. And it's just a very interesting contrast between slow motion and actual speed. But what you see here is the white cloth put over the collection device. That white cloth reflects the heat and the sun away from the wasps that are in the collection device. And that keeps them a little bit more viable, allows them to not overheat before we can get them frozen for venom immunotherapy. And as you see here, after a relatively short collection period on this day, that collection device is absolutely packed with wasps. And wasp venom in general is very heat sensitive. It can be ruined if these wasps overheat. Uh, it has to be frozen while the wasps are fully viable and alive. So you see we take a break here and we collect this batch and we take them to freeze them. And the reason for that is once the bottle is full enough, we're going to change it out with an empty bottle and continue the attrition collection. But we have to do this very timely or the wasps will simply expire inside the collection bottle, both from lack of oxygen and overheating. So we're just walking them over to where the ice is being kept. This is a cooler full of dry ice, and we'll knock them out inside that dry ice, which is frozen CO2. It's a fast, humane way to preserve them. Then we'll move them into a chest freezer until the end of the season. So we're on our second bottle here collecting. The other one just went for freezing. So you see after just a few minutes, the second bottle is already starting to fill up again. And this just went on each day that we were there. It was a very productive nest. So we're just showing you all these days that we collected in a small series. These will be relatively brief videos. We'll see you in part four. Thanks for watching.